Data nerds, if I had to start over again, I'd be following this approach for learning how to become a data analyst. And I'm not only gonna be covering what technical skills you should be learning, using real world data, of course, but also get into breaking down these skills so you can learn them quicker and land a job faster during this AI boom that we're in. Now, if you're new here, I'm Luke, and I previously worked as a data analyst for a Fortune Global 500 company. After graduating college with an engineering degree, I served in the United States Navy aboard the USS Jimmy Carter. It wasn't until after my seven years in the Navy that I transitioned into data analytics landing my first job with only the technical skill of Excel. I started a YouTube channel shortly after this and have grown this channel by interviewing tons of aspiring and actual data analysts to learn about their journey. And more recently, focusing on building comprehensive courses to help others break into this field. And I don't think data analytics is going away anytime soon. That's not just me saying it, it's also what the data says. You've got mail. According to the future of job reports from the World Economic Forum, Data analysts are part of the top 15 jobs set to grow over the next decade, with estimations of this growth of up to 40%, along with other data jobs having similar growth rates. So this field is safe, but I do think you need a certain skill set in order to guarantee that job security. So let's get into those skills. Well, if you Google this, you get a whole array of options to choose from. And then diving into different sites, they list skills high on their lists based on their agenda, and they don't list any data points as a source of evidence. So where the heck do you start? Well, a couple years ago, I built a web scraper that collects job postings daily from popular sites like LinkedIn. And this bad boy collects thousands of jobs every day from around the world. I have a whole video on how I did this. I'll link it above if you're interested. Anyway, I aggregated all of these job postings and made it freely available via my online app located at datanerd.tech. As of filming this, we've collected over 3 million job postings over the past two years. And this app not only analyzes data analyst jobs, but also other data science jobs like data engineers or even data scientists. So let's break down data analyst top skills. And since the majority of my subscribers are from the United States, we'll select this as well. From this, we can see that SQL is in fact king, appearing in almost half of job postings. Next up is Excel, appearing in four of 10 jobs. Then Python and Tableau have similar amounts in nearly one third of jobs, followed by R and Power BI in nearly one fifth. Now outside of the top six, these skills drop off pretty dang quickly. So in playing my odds in the job market, I'm not gonna waste my time with low hanging fruit. Now datanerd.tech is not the only free resource that I provide. I'm launching a free five day crash course on becoming a data analyst. And this email course is packed full with even more information that I could jam into this video. So use the link in the description to sign up. Before we go further, we need to break down these tools because learning six tools can seem sort of daunting. And actually I don't recommend you learn them all. In general, for data analysts, I feel there are four technologies that you need to be aware of. Let's break them down. First is SQL. I classify this under database tools. That is a powerful language for querying, manipulating, and managing databases. And databases are by far the most common method for storing and managing data. So one of the key aspects of a data analyst is writing SQL queries in order to manage and also analyze different data sets. As far as what you need to focus on when learning this skill, I'll throw this up on the screen that I recommend to beginners and then also those that are more advanced in SQL. Next up is Excel. It's a versatile spreadsheet tool for data analysis, visualization, and even organization. Although I don't recommend it for that. This would be under, well, spreadsheet tools. And after databases, I find the second most common place that data is contained within is spreadsheets. Now you're probably familiar with how Excel easily stores structured data in rows and columns. But what I really like about this is how easy it is for a beginner to get up and running with it. Specifically, you can use formulas and functions to explore it. And then you can do something SQL can't do of actually visualizing your data. Once again, here's what I recommend when learning this tool. And really, I only knew a couple of items out of the advanced column when I got my first job. Next up are business intelligence tools like Power BI and Tableau. In the past, my bosses usually come to me and said something like, hey, I want the whole department to be able to see sales every time. And then using this type of tool, I connect it to a popular data source, probably a database, or an Excel file and pipe it into a dashboard that then others can go in and manipulate the data easily. So if you're catching that, you need to know the basics of spreadsheets and databases before you even jump into BI tools. Last up are programming languages like Python and R. And compared to all these previous tools, 
these are the one that I've used least as a data analyst. Now these tools are great at using a program language to interact with a data source, such as database or spreadsheet, and not only analyzing, but also being able to visualize it. The problem I've run into though, is that you may be working with others that don't know how to use a programming language. Thus all that work you've done, they can't double check it or even use it. Oh, hey there, it's me and you here. Let's actually now get into it and go over my data analyst roadmap. Ah. That's so cool, Luke. And as the name implies, we're gonna be going over in what order you should be learning these skills. The first one focusing on job ready skills. These are the skills I feel are absolutely necessary to land an entry level job. And for this, it's learning both skills of Excel and SQL. And this is based on two things. One, they're the two most common jobs according to job postings. But also when we dove into all those different skills, we learned that a lot of the other skills rely on you knowing databases and spreadsheets. Next up are what I call specialized skills. And I'm gonna put both the BI tools in here of Tableau or Power BI. I prioritize this next on the list for a few reasons. First, based on the data, of course. Second, because I feel it's an easy to learn skill. I learned Power BI in less than a weekend. And then finally, the third, Power BI and Tableau both depend on you getting data from things like spreadsheets or databases. Oh, and I recommend only one because once you learn one, I think it's pretty dang easy to learn the other. All right, last up are advanced skills. And to be completely honest, I don't even think you need these skills to get an entry level data analyst job. There's only two skills left from our data source. So you can probably guess what they are. Python and R. For this, I recommend you only learn one and I'm gonna be very specific about which one to learn and that's Python. Python is more of a multi-purpose use programming language and it's gonna have more use cases and it's a lot more widely accepted so you're safer learning that I feel. But all those great things do come at a cost. Python and also R are harder to learn. I've been trying to master this tool for the last seven years and I'm still learning. So don't think you're gonna master all the basics in a single weekend. And that's my roadmap. So let's now get into how we can actually learn these skills faster using proven techniques I've learned over the years. All right, first let's get into my learning approach and it's a two-step process. It consists of learning something and then building something. With learning something, there's actually an overwhelming amount of sources out there. In the past, I've used things like Coursera or DataCamp to uplevel my skills. Besides that, the primary one that I've shifted to more recently is using YouTube. There's a lot of high quality tutorials on here to actually get you up to speed with what you need to know. You just need to make sure that it's a reputable source. Here's some of my favorite creators in the data space that are making tutorial based content. So now that you've learned this skill, the next step in actually retaining what you've actually learned is now building something. With this, I'm building portfolio projects. And in data analytics, it's a practical demonstration of your skills. You take real world data, clean it up, analyze it and visualize it. From there, you share it on popular sites like LinkedIn or GitHub. And building a project, is not only great because now you're retaining these skills, but now you've demonstrated experience, this is real world experience, that you now list on your resume and demonstrate to employers that you have this skill set. Because of my strong belief in this two step approach of learning and building something, over the past year, I've been building out free courses for my fellow data nerds to use to learn the skills using this approach. And doing this alone is no small feat. So I've teamed up with my course producer, Kelly Adams, in order to help me actually build these courses out and make sure I'm not missing anything. For the first part of each of the courses, you learn right alongside me as we go through the basic using real world examples on a real data set. After this, we get into building that portfolio project by applying those skills that you've learned. And by the end, you have a shareable project to now demonstrate your experience. All the courses along with any resources needed to complete it are included for free. Over the course of this year, I'm gonna be working to add these courses to the catalog to make it complete. Now that's my learning approach, but there's one other tip that I wanna give you that I've been using more recently in speeding up my workflow and learning faster. But first, let me explain the issue I used to face. A few years ago when I was learning Python, I'd get stuck on some coding error. I'd paste it into Google, go to the first link, find out this link wasn't really related to my problem, then go to the second link, maybe even third, and repeat this process until finally I had somewhat of a solution I could piecemeal together to solve my initial error. Now, it was good because I was learning still, but it was highly inefficient in actually getting the knowledge that I needed to learn faster. Fast forward a few years and now we have these chatbots. I can paste my error into this and get a full breakdown of what went wrong. I can even take it a step further by asking it questions of how I messed up so it further reinforces my learning. Now you may be like, Luke, 
Isn't AI gonna be taking all of our jobs? Well, according to the 2024 Stack Overflow Developer Survey, they asked over 30,000 people to find out if they thought AI tools were a threat to their job. And come to find out, seven in 10 thought that AI was no threat to their job. And an even more surprising statistic were these key benefits of AI tools. Specifically, eight out of 10 felt like these tools increased their productivity, which I feel the same. Oh, and six out of 10? felt like they sped up their learnings. And you're probably like, Luke, which tool should I use? Well, I think the free option from ChatGPT is probably the best option. Feel free to check out this video. All right, as always, if you got value out of this video, smash that like button. And with that, I'll see you in the next one.